Right, come on, final this weekend, Anna uh, Kilkenny against um, against Galway. How do you see it going? Yeah, like, I mean, I think you know the the cup is going back to a new county this year, which as a Cork person isn't great. But I think you know both sides have have um, worked really hard to get there. It's a repeat of the league final. Galway just edged it out in there, and then the week like a week or two previous or the week or two after that, then they took each other on the first round of championship when Kilkenny got the better of them. And like it's never been by more than a point or two, so they're very evenly matched sides. So. On Sunday, I can see it coming down to quite a tactical matchup battle. Like Cahill and Anne will have their homework done. They'll be looking at the foreign players. But as we know in all Ireland finals down through the years, it's not necessarily the foreign players the ones that step up. It's the ones that mightn't even have the great game up until that point. I think it's going to be very physical, very intense. I really hope the referee lets it go. I really hope that we see free flowing camogie and not a free taking shootout because while both free takers are incredibly accurate, nobody wants to see that. And I, I do think it's going to go down to the wire. I think it's going to be a repeat of the league final that there's going to be very little separating sides. When I was drilling into the numbers, I was looking at the amount, like Kilkenny are glutton for punishment. They've lost, I think, eight of their last, last nine finals, which wasn't all down to them. Lost the last two in injury time. It's it's going to be t- like. Do you think that there's any sort of white line fever for them? I don't really, and I think to be fair, uh, Anne Downing's after making a big move this year by putting Anne Dalton up centre forward because, like, they've been there or thereabouts, and they, mm. they've played a sweeper system and they've been very tight. But they obviously realised that they had to do something a little different. Like, she's mm. one of the best players in the country, and she's yeah. been absolutely lighting it up, putting up serious scores all mm. this year. So I think. Like they think now that they're going to outscore opposition yeah. rather than contain them, which is very interesting. I think there was a kind of a narrative the last couple of years after the final that they weren't the best games in the world. Um, semi-finals quite and defensive. quarter-finals, yeah, yeah, quite defensive. And I think maybe as well, in a way, while they want to win, I think they're aware that it needs to be a better spectacle as well for the promotion of the game. Now, don't get me wrong, they want to win. And I think, I think by putting her up there, I just think they're thinking... We're going to make this a show. It's not. It's almost like Brazil or Barcelona. Yeah, we, we we could score two eighteen. We might concede two fifteen or two sixteen, yeah. but we still think we have enough in the attack to beat them. Uh, I don't. I don't see anything. They were coming to get up against Cork, who were one of the best teams of all time, realistically, and it was right down uh, to, to the narrow margins at the very end. So I don't think there's any um, fear or anything when they get into the last stage. It's going to be a really interesting game. Yeah. Though. The only thing I suppose with having Anne Dalton then up centre forward is that their defence is a little bit more vulnerable and Michael's right, they have been conceding more and I suppose if you look at, I mean no but then they've got 16 goals and Anne has definitely played a part in a lot of them. Galway have got 10 goals so they're not afraid of, of shooting either and I suppose that would be the fear is that are you robbing Peter to play Paul? I personally think that Anne Dalton's best position is centre back. I think that's where she commands, she's a real playmaker and I think putting her up centre forward I mean Anne can play anywhere but I Suppose like that if you have like a, a potent threat like Galway's forward line, Ailish O'Reilly, you know, Aoife Dunahu, you know, I, I wouldn't be massively surprised if during that game that she actually went back into centre back if Galway um, attack was causing the problems because such, such is her versatility. But I think with, with Kilkenny, I completely agree with you. I think in the last few years they've gone within, they've gone in with a defensive mindset mm. when at times they should have attacked. I mean, Cork last year were, were vulnerable in some spots and I don't think they actually capitalised on it. And I think this year they know that the hunger of Galway, they are not going to be complacent. They are chasing a title for the first time since 2013. Those girls have lost more semi-finals. You're talking about Kilkenny losing finals. Galway weren't even getting to them. They were So they are going to be so mad for silverware as well. I think that's what's going to make this game brilliant is that both of them are just dying to take out Duffy Cup home. And was a lot of Galway beating uh, Cork in the semi-final, was that down to Galway being so hungry or were Cork overdoing it, overplaying the ball and sort of victim, or, you know, orchestrating their own downfall? Yeah, to me, I think I saw a tenacity in Galway that I haven't seen in the last number of years, if I'm honest. And I think for me, it's kind of a throwback to Limerick when... Limerick Curlers were playing Kilkenny last year and Richie Hogan got the goal and Tom Morris he went up the side and got the point when Julia White got that um, goal the composure that Galway showed the belief that they showed to tack on the three points afterwards I hadn't seen that in a Galway side often that was when they kind of collapsed like a deck of cards whereas their big players stood up and Carl has obviously been working really hard in that self-belief and I think if they bring that into the game on Sunday um, it, it could be very different because we, we know that Kilkenny play in confidence 
Whereas we hadn't seen Galway playing with that level of confidence before, so I think it'll be it'll be really interesting. Yeah, Galway's an interesting one. There's no point in any different. Galway were in disarray the last couple of years, and there was managers coming and going, mm-hmm. and there was managers there for a couple of months, and they were gone, and there was a manager gotten rid of in the off season, then yeah. over a controversial kind of an incident in the background as well. Like so, like don't anyone like say any any different than if you buy if you buy into a manager and you believe in what he's doing and what his backroom team is doing, you can go any distance, and they clearly buy into what Cottle yeah. Murray is, is selling to them. And like they have a great chance of winning senior and intermediate and in the one day, which you've gotten which, used to doing yeah, the last couple of years. But, but as but you said, like it's it's a, it's it shows as well with with Cahal that like he is a manager because yeah. it's not just one panel that's after buying into what he's exactly, doing. It's yeah. it's two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's and like. Everyone knew Galway had the potential. Like the Galway club scene is unbelievably mm-hmm. strong with Mullia and Sarsfields yeah. and a couple more that I'm probably leaving out as well. Like they have a really strong club scene, and there's all those players there, but they just weren't delivering the last couple of years. So I think they'll they'll be uh, they'll be fairly keen to make hay on Sunday, but it's not going to be simple. And we were just talking about Kilkenny there. Like Kilkenny had too many good forwards to not play a more attacking style. Like when you have the Farrells and you have uh, Katie Kate Power Kate and, and Dalton, Michelle Quilty as well, who's kind of plays in an attacking role as well. They've too many good players to not play an attacking mm-hmm. game uh, while I do think it will be very very tight and physical I expect it to be uh, a lot more high scoring than maybe previous finals in the yeah. last couple of years and hopefully it doesn't come down to rules and freeze and stop start game because that's like nobody wants that no. We might talk about some of those rule things and a couple of players that have spoken to are frustrated with a couple of rules. But before I do, a couple of the matchups that stand out, Miriam Walsh against you know, Galway fullback Sarah Dervin, uh, Ailish O'Reilly maybe been picked up by Colette Dormer. Are they some yeah. of the crucial matchups? Yeah, I think for me Sarah Dervin is a stalwart for Galway and I mean she is one of the best fielders of, of, um, of the game in terms of aerial possession. So, you know, but Miriam Walsh is well able to hold her own as well and often at times if if players make the mistake of hitting in the high ball on Sarah she will come out time and time again whereas Miriam Walsh is as strong as her physically and she has also a presence in the air so it's going to be very interesting to see how Kilkenny play that um, and I think Ailey O'Reilly, she's so potent you know I mean she even though in the quarterfinals she actually wasn't scoring as much as she normally does she was involved in every every score that they got she either got a hand pass or she was the one that won the free so Colette Dormer though is one of the best man markers in the game like she is somebody that will stick to a job she's extremely fit she's extremely agile she's very determined so yeah I mean certainly for me even picking up Neil Kilkenny Neil Kilkenny got player of the match in the semi-final against Cork and she has been one of the best Galway players we've seen one of the best players we've seen in the game so for me picking up Neil Kilkenny and nullifying her threat and equally nullifying Anne Dalton I think they're the two massive ones and then it'll be the people like Aoife Dunne who for Galway that will creep in who's having a tremendous year like she's pace to burn it'll be those players that you know the ones that you could take the eye off the ball because people could be so focused on Neve Kilkenny that they actually might forget you know that they meet they, there's plenty of players that they have to, to mark and I think if you get too bogged down with marking players then you forget your own game yeah. I think that's probably what Kilkenny yeah. have done the last few years is that they've been so preoccupied with the opposition that I think my concern they kind of need to go out and attack the game and then just hope that the, the referee's in, um, in good form because you'll get a great contest if you let these teams play Camogie just before we talk about rules, can I ask you, what's the situation with Paulie was obviously over the seniors and intermediates what's the situation like on All Ireland final day for him and what it would be like for Kyle Murray on Sunday yeah, I think it's very like it is very intense like JJ Doyle did it with Wexford Tony right, Ward yeah, with, yeah. did it with Galway so I mean managements do it I mean it, to me it's about keeping the panel separate like Paddy didn't do that and it makes it very difficult because yeah. then if you're bringing on a sub during the championship year do I do I hold them back for intermediate or do I need them for senior whereas Kali kept them two separate panels which immediately mm. just at least takes one challenge out of it then because yeah. you've got players that are only focusing on, on one team and is he on the line for the full book. <laughs> yeah, he's on the line for That's bookings. unbelievable. Yeah, now I know often at times a manager, depending on obviously the situation, might go in 15 minutes at the end. But obviously that depends. If the, the most game important is in, 15 minutes. But as well. yeah, if you're up seven or eight points, grand. Yeah, but if it's yeah. if the game is in the melting pot, no manager wants to leave their line. It's kind of like you know mm. the captain leaving a ship. Like you want to make sure that you are there until the very end. Um, and I think we'll call it'll be about the support structures he has in each management team around him because yeah. he obviously can only be one place the one time. So if he's out managing the intermediates, he needs to make sure that the people in the dressing room with the Galway senior team are keeping them calm, keeping them focused, keeping them composed. That the girls trust them and that they buy into what they're saying because if those people are going to be in their ear while Cahal isn't there and then Cahal just needs to pick up. But it's very difficult if your team doesn't win. It gives the team a lift if the first team wins 
but we've been on the back for where the team hasn't been successful. And even for a manager, they're only human. They have to pick themselves back up. They have put in hours and hours and days and months into managing that team and they've lost. And then you have to like wipe the slate key and go again. Like It's a challenge. It's certainly an extra added challenge, Call It makes it easier that they're separate panels. But it, it's going to be the wider management teams are going to play a big role on Sunday. But for the players, I remember with us, it didn't really matter just too much. We were focusing on our game. We you want, have leaders with yeah, dressing You wanted well, the intermediates yeah. to win, but I mean, ultimately their outcome couldn't affect you. And as you said, I think with the likes of Galway, they have players that have been playing well over a decade at this stage. Those girls are, you know, they, they'll take the leadership. Cahill may not even have that much to do in the dress room before they hit the, before they hit the field. We'll come to the, the predictions in a second, but this is uh, Camogie's day to advertise it to the country. It's... Are there any rules that particularly frustrate you? Because there has been a lot of talk about them being free fests the last couple of years. Yeah, I think, look, I mean, at the end of the day, if you're spending more and more time in the gym and getting faster and getting stronger, the game has to evolve with the with the players. And if, you know, to make the spectacle as best as it can be um, and to put it up there with some of the the other sports we do have to evolve the, the rules it's not about doing a complete overhaul but I think having to allow and legislate for a more physical contact is important because if you legislate for it it'll actually make the game safer because then you're not relying on the referee to make the call one way or another it's a very difficult position for a ref to be in at times because they want to let the game flow but then technically the, the player is breaking the rules so I think allowing shouldering and actually allowing that physical contact is really important for me as a defender I want to get rid of that hand pass goal Yes. Like that for me, I just to me we're talking about spectacle. The skill levels that are evident in Komogi, they're the, the things that go on in the games are just as skillful as men a lot of the time. That hang pass goal to me, it just I didn't like it when Ray Cummins was doing it, so I don't like it now. I, I just wasn't think complaining it. when Johnny Flaherty did it in eighty one. Dropping the hurley as well. That's, yeah, that's yeah it is. Well, do you know what? We, uh, I've won, won three club all Ireland's with Milford, and our manager never allowed us to drop the hurley ever. Like you got killed for it. Mm. Frankie Flannery would actually like nearly be in on top of you because what he didn't want is if you were needed then. And in the same play you know Hurley so it was you know and that's a very you know it's a very practical thing hang on to your Hurley but I think the hand pass goal for me and the physical contact is there are two really um, there are two really important rules that even if they just change those personally I think make the, the, the game the exact same make there be no change in the rules have the 70 minutes have everything the same as the lads because the girls are well able for it and I think the game needs it and if you put both of them on a par and both of them on a pedestal you're most likely then going to attract even greater numbers because it is going to increase the game as a spectacle. And one final question then. The last six years, the winners have had 14 scores or fewer. Who's going to win this game and how? You know what, it's... Galway really surprised me. I did think it was going to be a Cork Kilkenny final and if I'm honest, a lot of people did think it was going to be a Cork Kilkenny final. More, like, a lot of credit has to go to Galway for that belief. I just feel that the hurt of the last few years, Kilkenny will get them over the line. Having the likes of Van Dalton up front, having Kilkenny attack the game from the word go. They have a plethora of players that can, that can step up and they've scored 16 goals in this year's championship. Expect to see a few more on Sunday. And I just think, as I said, I know I've lost plenty of All-Irelands in the past. When you're sitting in the dressing room there's five minutes to go or you're dying and you're tired and you can't run anymore, that's in your head. You know, you don't want to experience that horrible feeling. And while Galway, it's been taking them a while to get to a final, like it's 2015, I think the hurt over the last few years, Hickle Kenny will... Um, We'll see them over the line, but expect a physical contest. And in a word. Yeah, Galway are marginal favourites because they beat Cork. I don't think it should be forgotten how good Kilkenny have been the last couple of years. It's Kilkenny by a score for me. Yeah.